Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation, the opportunity to present this. Uh, hopefully it will be presented. <laughs> so, ah, I have to push. Okay, oh, okay. So, what I'll tell you today about is about X-ray scattering uh, in solution, solution X-ray scattering, and how to do high-resolution structures with this, in this method. So I'll tell you about three systems. Our goal really in the, in the lab is to understand how biomolecules interact with one another, and then to understand, the, to resolve the high-resolution structure of these self-assembled structures that form in solution, and to reveal the dynamics of self-assembly. But today I'll focus mainly on the structure and a little bit about the other. So this, the, the method is very simple. In, 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 uh, the concept is that you have an X-ray beam that he, um, goes into a solution that in a capillary, in a small capillary, and the, the X-ray photon are scattered off the sample, going on to a, an area detector, and you can see the pattern, the X-ray pattern on the, on the bottom here, on the right bottom, which is typical to solution scattering, where you see modulations in the intensity, um, and the, the, you see ring patterns because of the, the you, have, you have all the orientations um, in, the, in, the, in the solution. And in principle, the, the, what you get, the scattering amplitude is the Fourier transform or the mathematical transform of the, of the electron density, which is the shape, corresponding to the shape of your particle. In addition, if you, ha if you have just particles that are uh, in orient orientations without any order between them, you see this, this shape. In addition, if you have some order, as you see on the, on the bottom left, when you have spheres in a hexagonal pattern, you'll see correlation peaks that correspond to this organization. So these are the things that you can get. And typically what we do when we have this uh, uh, radial pattern, we integrate the intensity radially. So from each ring, we get uh, 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 the intensity of this ring, and then we plot the intensity as a function of the scattering angles. This is what the, the, the setup looks like at home. We have an in-house setup where you have the, the source and, uh, and, and it's all, the, all the flight path that the X-ray goes through, and at and, uh, and the, the far end, you have the detector. To, to do high-resolution, time-resolved experiment, we have to go to synchrotrons, they're listed here at the bottom. And the type of, in an in-house uh, setup, you can get this, uh, uh, more or less the, the performance of a second-generation synchrotron. But if you want to get high-resolution, um, uh, time-resolved experiment, you have to go to synchrotron, where you can go down to five or a few milliseconds uh, uh, resolution. And then in the special resolution, it goes between one angstrom to 100 nanometer, and in synchrotron, you can go also go to a few hundred nanometers. Okay, why does it? Okay, so the advantages of this method is that it's a bulk method. You can get high resolution, highly accurate numbers. Um, and, but there, there are also challenges, because you have to have monodispersed uh, solutions. Um, and you don't see the minority population because it's a bulk technique. And the main challenge that we uh, took upon uh, to improve is really the analysis uh, uh, is challenging. So what we did, we developed a software, it's called X Plus. We published it in 2010, where you can do, what you can do in this software is you can define different geometries, spherical, layered geometries, helical shapes or cylindrical shapes, with multi-layers, and you can define the layer and the thickness, the density of each layer, correspond to the different materials, and you can this way analyze the, um, the structures that you have. Mo and more recently, we have improved this uh, to a new software that you can do basically a lot more things with these. You can combine any, any shape, any, any um, geometry, with also uh, a high-resolution structure that you have from uh, crystallography, you can combine this information and do any level of complexity analysis uh, that you need. So I'll, the first example will be uh, tubulin. Tubulin is a protein that forms the microtubule. The structure of tubulin is known. And, it, and I can show you the progress of how we can uh, uh, do the analysis of tubulin. So tubulin is, is, is uh, you see the, the structure uh, on, the, on, the left, on, the, on the right, at the far end. And 
Then tubulin subunits, now represented with uh, blue and, and um, white spheres, assemble head to tail to form protofilament, and then 13 protofilament close to form a nanotube structure, protein self-assembly with the dimension listed here. And tubulin, if you look at the cell and label them in green, you can see that it forms a cytoskeleton, and also in cell division has the green fibers that pull the chromosomes are very important. So how do we analyze? When we started, we analyzed tubulin microtubule as a hollow cylinder. And the far end, you can see the low resolution model of, uh, of, um, of these uh, microtubules. And low resolution, the data at low angle correspond to low resolution. And what you can see with the simple model of a hollow cylinder, you can model the data. The data is in, in, in black. You can model to a certain extent, and at some point, the model breaks. Then we went to a, a more uh, uh, highly resolved data where we, we took into account the helical nature of the assembly of tubulin. And there, you can see that you can see additional feature. The blue curve is, is uh, keep, keeping more information. But then, this was not good enough, and we took, we break the helical structure into spheres in the helical lattice, and here you can see the broken uh, red curve that has the same shape, more or less, of the data, but the, the relative intensities was incorrect. To improve that, we, we took into account the, the, the thermal fluctuation. You can do this by uh, applying uh, the, with, with the software we, we developed, and then you can see the, the, the blue and the green curves that more or less fit, but this is not good enough yet. So to better resolve this structure, we took higher, we, we improved this by going to dock the structure of tubulin from the crystallography structure, from the dimer, into the lattice of the microtubule. And the data that you see is the black uh, on the on, um, symbols, where the data is also high resolution data. It's, it's data that we had to take with a lot of effort. And the resolution here is below, below one nanometer, a few angstrom resolution. And the model is the model that corresponds to what you see on the right. Still work in progress, but you see the features, that what I'm showing you is a lot more feature, many more features that we can account with this kind of approach. Then if you have assemblies of tubulin to form um, um, bundles, in addition, if you have the contribution from one, one tubulin, then you see in addition the contribution from the lattice. These are peaks that you can index, and they, you can get the dimensions of the hexagonal uh, lattice. So, and furthermore, you can see other structure of tubulin that we resolved with inverted tubulin that in, induced with dynamics of uh, some ions. You can get other structure like inverted uh, tubulin helical nanotubes that, uh, that only with X-ray, with the microscopy, electron microscopy, they appear, may appear as a stack of rings of tubulins, but only X-ray can resolve that these are really a helical structure. Another example is the viruses. We've done, we looked at the virus, the SE40 virus, and, and the structure of the virus capsid was resolved with, with the, with the uh, crystallography, but the inside packing of the DNA inside it with the histone that formed, there is a, like a mini chromosome structure inside was unknown. And with X-ray scattering, what we could do is, at low resolution, we, we looked at spherical models, spherical shells. We immediately, even with this simple model, we could already uh, see the density profile, as you can see at the inset, that has some density. We could pick the, the density in the middle. On the, on the right, you see virus-like particles when you take DNA and the, the protein that forms the capsid. And there you see that the density in the middle without the nucleosomes is very, very low compared to... Uh, so most of the DNA goes to the wall of the capsid. A better model to improve the resolution of uh, our signal was done by breaking the outer sphere of this uh, virus into little spheres that correspond to the, the proteins that form the capsid. And there, you can see the blue curve can, be, can fit better the double hump at the data. It corresponds now to the spacing correlation between those proteins that form the capsid. But we coupled then with uh, Daniel Harris from our university. And he did simulation, Monte Carlo simulations, about 
how, how um, these, these nucleosomes should pack, how, how uh, ellipsoid would pack in, uh, in, in a confined environment of, of, the, of the capsid, of the sphere. And by taking snapshots from his simulations, we dock the structure of, of the nucleosomes for closely related uh, uh, structure into uh, the, the, to the, the coordinates that we get from the simulation. We built the mini chromosomes inside the virus at atomic resolution, more or less, and then we took the structure of the, of the protein capsid uh, that was crystallized. We used the, uh, put it in the symmetry of the virus, the, the, the icosahedral symmetry, and there you can see that we can model to very high Q, which correspond to very high resolution, the data of, of the virus. And this is still in, on, an ongoing work where we try to now correlate between the parameter of the simulation and the, and the, and, and the experiment at the different conditions. So, so this is another example. Another thing that we did that I will not go into is the dynamics of self-assembly of virus-like particle. We could, with time-resolved experiment, could really follow all the process and show that the, the virus assembled with um, a nucleation step that followed by uh, elongation step, and we could get all the energetics associated with this assembly and the rate constant, and so on. Now, the last example would be associated with membranes so, and liposomes. And we did a lot of work on, on basic science of, of uh, you know, physical chemistry of membranes, where you can see now if you have lipid bilayers, you can model the electron density profile along the vertical uh, uh, um, um, direction that, uh, of the membrane. So this is an example of, of, of a few data uh, and analysis. You can look at different density profile, as you can see at the insets here, density profile, different uh, models of this. This can be done, this is, uh, and you can get a lot of information out of this. Even if you have ions that adsorb to the membrane, even you can, you can pick those densities. And then if you have assemblies of these uh, to form a stack, you can also get the contribution that you, as you can see the blue curve is the line shape analysis of the scattering peaks that correspond to the spacing between bilayers. If they form a stack, you can get the despacing, but also you can get a lot of information about the elastic properties of the membranes and also about the compression modulus, so directly getting the molecular forces. Another way to get molecular forces interactions is to use the osmotic stress method where you apply, uh, use PEG, polyethylene glycol or polyethylene oxide to apply osmotic stress to the membranes and then you can see that with X-ray you measure the variation of the, the, the spacing between membranes and this is an example of, of charge membrane, the OPS or DLPS where you have um, at high confinement, what we revealed in this paper is that although the, if you have charged membranes, you have negatively charged, uh, negatively charged membrane, you have positively charged ions that uh, go into solution because they gain entropy, then by pressure at some point you see condensation of these ions that is depicted by uh, 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 the theory that we had to uh, apply in order to get a rigorous uh, physical theory to fit this data. Well, normal poisson boltzmann does not fit. Another, another thing you can do is you can do wide-angle X-ray scattering. In this case, what you can get is you can get information about the organization of the lipids within the bilayer, and you can look at domain size or, or lattice uh, um, um, that if you have, for example, the, the LPS. In this case, you can bind it with, with molecular dynamic simulations. If you have high-resolution uh, simulation like this, you can calculate the excess scattering compared with experiment and get the organization of such lipids. Uh, so if you have liposome, this is the project we have with, with the Hesse Barnholt, uh, uh, then you have a structure, of, you have the drug inside, you have peg, peg layers, you can see all of this information. If you look at the empty liposome, the signal shows you here, you can get exactly the parameters of the of the head-to-head -head thickness because you have phosphate groups and the density of this phosphate is high. And then you have also the peg layer. You can detect the peg layer. Then if you add the drug, you can see the difference that the drug, uh, the, the doxorubicin, if you have ammonium sulfate ions, 
you can see the bulk in wide angle X-ray scattering, you can see the bulk structure of the, of the, of the drug in, uh, in, in the bulk, in just in solution, but you can also see it, the contribution in the liposomes itself. And you can get the, the, the spacing between, apparently this drug is forming a hexagonal packing of filaments, and you can get the dimension, the A is the dimension, the spacing between the filaments, and you can also get the dimension of the drug. And that corresponds pretty well with what you can get, see from the uh, cryotem uh, microscopy. If you change the, the salt uh, that leads to this, uh, um, uh, the, the loading salt, uh, and you, you change the sulfate to metans sulfate, you see no crystal in the drugs. And, and you see the, the peg layer, all of this, you can see the difference between the two uh, uh, loading methods. And that suggests that actually the sulfate ions that are highly hydrated are excluded from the drug and therefore apply osmotic stress to this drug. And, there, and this is why with sulfate ions you get crystals and not and with, the, with the metal sulfate that is less hydrated, it's incorporated and does not allow crystallization. What you can see also, you can vary the peg layer, for example, and you can see the dimensions of the peg layer and the dimension of the drug that, in, that are inside the drug, uh, that how they, 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 they are in, um, uh, influenced by the, size, uh, uh, by the size of the amount of the peg layer that you uh, vary. So the conclusion that what I try to say, show you here is how you can use solution axis scattering with analysis, advanced analysis uh, ways to, do, uh, the, uh, to get a lot of structural information, valuable information, and, um, and complementary, which is complementary to other structural methods. So in, w by combining the soft matter physics type of approach with a high resolution modeling, we can approach structure that maybe structural biologists would have loved to approach, but they cannot be crystallized. So this is an alternative way to, to address these kind of structures. More information you can see in this website, sucksprecise.com, and should acknowledge the people that uh, work in, on this project from my group. Thank you very much. Any burning questions, or the rest we leave to the guy? So um, this is not my field, so forgive me if this seems a little bit out of the ordinary. How many, if you have a completely new structure, how many shots do you need, or how many pictures do you need through this process in order to start the first approximation? And then taking that further, as you're increasing resolution, how does rotation add to the complexity of this type of a process? So, rotation, the fact that the things rotate, um, are taken into account. This is, this is uh, fully, in the, fully in the analysis. Um, if, if I have a completely new structure that I don't know anything about it, there's no way I can solve it. Okay, so I have to know something about what I put in, what, what are the, some information about this, then there is a chance that I'll, 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 I will never approach something. If I get a signal with no information, I cannot do anything with it. So SACS is usually, usually a way to give you quantitative uh, data about what you know more or less qualitatively. And you know it from other methods like microscopy and other things. But you can get really precise numbers and then it's a process. It takes, depends on the complexity of the problem. For the viruses we are working on the viruses, it's a two-year project, for example. The microtubule is also a similar thing. But most of it is also because we developed the method, the methodology. So it's likely that, you know, in future years, in coming years, we'll be able to do a lot more with these methods. But it's, it's, we have the need, we develop the methods, and then we, so it's, it's hard to count. But basically, you have to do it stepwise. You know, like, if you, if you have a system like you, like the doxy, okay, I don't want to comment on the viruses, although I worked on it in the past quite a lot, I don't want to comment, but regarding the doxyl, for example, so you start with liposome alone, you see how they look like, then you, you know, you look at cryotemps that, that they, in a minute we'll see, 
from Oren, and then you put things together, and then you can relate to the crystal inside. You can separate them because only the, the crystal appear only when there is drug inside. And then you know what belongs to what, and then you can resolve this uh, very nicely. But it's time consuming, but there is no other alternative method, from my experience, that can give you answer to what the X-ray can. There is no other way to get it. Yes, Alberto. Quick question, Ori. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is a very far away from my field, but I, you mentioned that the solutions have to be homogeneous. homogeneous in as the much as possible. Because I, I, was, I was wondering, I mean, for the virus, I can understand. But with liposomes, you may have probably a lot of noise from liposomes that have different amounts of loaded drug. Some liposomes may totally, may be of different size. So how do you get rid of all the noise? Okay, so X-ray, the, the way X-ray is doing it is that it goes into a reciprocal space. At low angle, at very low angle, you'll get information about the different sizes. And then when you go to wider and wider angle, you look into the structure of, essentially of the bilayer. And then you can look at the si structure of the lip lipids themselves. So you can separate the contribution to different angles, and then you can resolve this stepwise. So you can go from low resolution Okay, if we would go to very low angle, then you, you can see the, the, the distribution of sizes of liposomes. Which are very good, actually. Yeah. Very They're actually pretty good. We, we did, we compared with the model of the membrane and model of, of vesicles, and they, and so, so to see this, you have to go to very low angle to see this, this problem. But you see a lot of the scattering comes from the bilayer itself, and the structure of the peg, and the, and, the, and, the, and the crystal of the, or if you don't have a crystal of the, the drug. The most expensive method to get size distribution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Uri, can you elaborate a little bit on the temporary resolution that you can get, especially with the synchrotron radiation from some of the processes yeah. are very fast. And, uh, yeah, so we were able to go down to five millisecond resolution with uh, uh, exposure time of five milliseconds and intervals that were, we took intervals of 50 milliseconds between measurements, but you can vary this, you can, five milliseconds is really If you really look at two uh, relatively small domain of the scattering, uh, can you do it even faster, it, or it, you get the... Yeah, you can go, you can, you can use, there are people that used, were able to get microsecond resolution, with, uh, with, but with a different approach of uh, going with microfluidics, and then flowing the solution through this, and then by, so you have a mixture, there is a position where the solution mix, and then as you go along the, the channel, it corresponds to different time steps. So you always keep the same position. You, you go through this, and this, this position is always your delta T. By the flow rate, you can determine this. So you can go, you can go to very fast if you want, but then the quantities are lower. It's not easy to do it. No free lines. Okay, I think we go to the next speaker. Thank you all very much. We'll sure. have a discussion later for, with all the speakers.